our friends. Today we're going to shoot this little video and we're going to talk about break valves and proportioning valves. I probably should have done this video a long time ago because I get more questions about brake valves or proportioning valves than any other single topic. Let me start off with the term proportioning valve, which an engineer threw out a long time ago that got stuck in some literature, is a really bad term and it's really incorrect. These things don't do any proportioning. They are pressure reducing valves. That is correct. They are pressure reducing valves. What engineers and manufacturers figured out a long time ago that due to the nature of drum brakes and the fact that they self energize, you can check another video or research it, drum brakes self energize, they figured out that depending on the tire and the tread, and the weight of the vehicle that drum brakes in general lock up completely between 250 and 300 psi. So they came up with valves that would reduce that pressure or try to keep that from happening as best as possible. To stop it completely is basically impossible. So they designed these pressure reducing valves. Here's one standalone. Here it is on the back end of this combination T8 valve. Here it is on an A-body valve right here. That's part of it. They were all designed with a cut-in pressure or spring pressure depending on the model. A-body, B-body, and such and such. Normally 250, 275, and on station wagons, uh, about 300 was the cut-in pressure. Now let me remind you, these valves under light and normal braking, they don't do anything. If the line pressure doesn't reach 275, they just let it cruise on through. They are a completely flow-through valve. They have no restriction whatsoever until they reach that cut-in pressure. This was designed for emergency braking. When that pressure level raises real high, overloads the spring, then it cuts that line pressure from then on about 50%. That's why when you look at it on a graph, here's your graph, it's linear up to your cut-in pressure and then it slopes off gradually. That's what these things do and that's all that they do because of the simple fact that they're trying to reduce the line pressure on drum brake cars that are equipped with disc brake cars. See, here's the deal. Disc brakes have ultimate control and they cool rapidly but they are inefficient by design. They require in general 10 times the line pressure of drum brakes. Drum brakes like to completely lock up at 300 PSI. Disc brakes, they just are all fine and dandy with 3000 PSI. You got 500 PSI coming out of your big old power booster going down to your calipers. You've got your single piston Kelsey Hayes calipers have almost six square inches of surface area. You take 500 pounds coming in, multiplied by six, you've got 3,000 PSI at the pads. That's right, friends. Trying to stop a rotating disc by squeezing isn't real efficient. You got lots of control and they cool rapidly, but it's inefficient. Now, drum brakes, on the other hand, they don't cool. Are you with me? They're extremely efficient, and yet you don't have much control either. So, there you go. So, want to talk about Mopar valves in general. This is a distribution block, safety switch, what they called it. 
This is basically a hollow block. It's got a piston right here inside of it that can go back and forth. Let me tell you what this little neat little gizmo does. I'm fascinated by these people that design this stuff. So simple but effective. So, you got pressure coming in from two points from the master cylinder. As long as the pressure's the same and equal and everything's working just hunky-dory, the little piston, he stays centered right there where he wants to be. All of a sudden, you got a low pressure side, you got a leak or the master cylinder's not putting out more on one end than the other. Well, now you've got a low pressure condition on one side. So, what happens? Common sense tells you, well, the high pressure side pushes this piston over and it closes off that leakier, low performance side. There you go. Power wire comes in here. As soon as that piston goes over and grounds out, boom, your dummy light comes on. So, we'll talk about our factory disc brake cars. 1967, 1968, through the first half of about 1969 in general. These blocks were used on our cars and the first early disc brakes that came out, they installed this valve right here, about 18 inches behind it, underneath the driver's seat. This was the first setup for disc brakes, this little simple thing, called the proportioning valve, but it's not. It's a pressure reducing valve, just like described. So you got these two blocks, all right? Then come along about mid-1969 through about January of 1970, Ma, Ma, Ma Mopar said, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to add a metering valve. We're going to add a metering valve to the front brakes. Now, let me tell you, friends, this was a big improvement. The front metering valve, this is the beginning of ABS brakes. Let me tell you what it does. It's really cool. This valve right here, it doesn't allow anything to go through it until it reaches about 130 PSI. Well, you say, why is that? That sounds crazy. Well, guess what it does? It makes damn sure, by not letting any brake fluid go through, it makes damn sure that the back brakes always engage before the front ones. Because if the front brakes ever engage before the back ones on a vehicle, the back swings around and you start to do the twist. And once you start to do the twist, you can't stop it. It's all over. The scariest situation ever to be in. So that's what this front metering block does. And then once it opens, the term metering, it meters out the flow over thousandths of a second. It doesn't open wide open, boom, boom, all at one time. It meters it out. This is the precursor to ABS brakes. Ma Mopar stuck it on the last half of 1969. So, your drum brake vehicle, your early disc brake vehicle, 67 and 68, got your little pressure reducing valve, and then they added the metering block. So you got the three block system. Then, January 1, 1970, Mopar, they did the final revision for the brass blocks. They come out with the combination valve, often called the TA or ARs, because that's where it was really seen, January 1st of 1970. And if you'll notice right here, friends, you got your little distribution block and your safety switch right here. You got your pressure reducing part on this end right here. And piggybacked right here, you've got your metering block. And this is why I tell people this is the unit that we reproduced. And this is why I tell people that this is the best factory valve that you can bolt on. It's also the 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 end of the brass valves. In 1971, they went to that ugly thing, that ugly cast iron combination valve because Ma Mopar was trying to save money everywhere and they were trying to save it on brake parts. The brake parts were downgraded a little bit in 1971, to be honest with you. Hurts my feelings, but 
it, it's just a fact. So, this right here is your combination valve, and as far as factory valves, this is probably the best thing that you can bolt on. No, excuse me. It is the best factory valve that you can bolt on your car. All right, so there you go, my friends. That's a little breakdown of our factory valves, and then you run up against this little simple gizmo right here. We've seen them. This is a, a what you'd call an adjustable valve. You can hook this up in line on just your rear line right here, and it's got this thumb wheel where you can you can adjust the cut in pressure and how it behaves. You hook this up on just your uh, rear line and go out to your stadium parking lot or your country road and, and practice four, five, six, eight stops from 40, you know, 50 miles an hour, and you dial it in till you get really good braking on the. Uh, rear end, but uh, you don't get a whole lot of slides. So this is your adjustable right here. So, all right, my friends, uh, that should cover it. And uh, oh, I wanted to add in a little simple fact because a lot of times I tell people on their disc brake kits when they call me that initially, you know, they don't have to change their valve. Normally, we're running wider tires now than we used to. Them little five and a half inch uh, bias ply tires, and and oftentimes the the back end now it. it it doesn't want to skid or lock up as easy. It continues to roll because we've got a little bit more of a tread pattern. And of course, people look at me because they think I'm crazy when they, you know, tell me, you know, you get, put disc brakes on, you got to change your valve. I've heard that all my life. It's on all the forums. Well, I'm going to say that not everything is a necessity. And uh, I will remind folks of a simple fact. Uh, C bodies and Imperials were heavier cars. They used a wider tire from the get-go. Here's the simple truth, my friend. Neither one of them used a proportioning valve or a pressure reducer. Go figure that one. Sounds like I might be telling the truth. All right, folks, if you have any questions, 817-691-5996. You can find me on the web. God bless you. God bless America. We need it. Happy Mopar, and I hope this was helpful to all my friends out there. Thank you. Goodbye.